Hello, this is Victor at RestoreMercedes.com. This video is for Mr. Lee in Oregon. And right now we have non ASR throttle body from S320. It's an affected unit. I'll show you in a minute what's going on with this unit. That's the reason I'm making this video before the repair. 00014157725 is the part number. It was produced in 1995. And it hasn't been cleaned off yet it hasn't been touched yet this is how it came so i just wanted to check for issue because it was sort of unusual problem and <clears throat> before i fix it i want to show what's wrong with it and then we'll take we'll take a look what we're going to do with it now the motor spins okay the wires are disintegrating as we can see, all of these cracks, see all those cracks on cables? That is obviously a sign of deterioration. What I can also do is, let's say, I take my probe and just touch this one. As you can see, insulation flakes right off. So by any means, wiring to be done that's a hundred percent but <clears throat> this unit has also a problem with the coil unfortunately clutch coil so first let me energize this unit and show you what's happening so let's put the power on so this is what's happening this is basically why you had that screeching noise motor is turning it tries to activate the plate to go to a certain angle, but eventually it will kind of, see, this is your noise. This is a screeching sound that was described <clears throat> when unit is energized, when the car is started. Okay, because the coil is not holding it. Although, because there was so much carbon around it, it sort of stays on idle. You know, when I'm, it's just very bizarre situation that this can actually happen, but it did happen, I see it. And the unit, as you can hear, it's still buzzing, making a little bit of the buzzing noise. But because the coil is not holding, I'm moving the plate, being that you have vacuum being drawn, we have the switching noise. This is pretty amazing stuff because usually <clears throat> it doesn't work like this. But in this case, somehow it got into this very bizarre mode where it's semi-energized. So this is very, very strange, but it is the, definitely a clutch coil issue. I'll show you in a minute. All beside the cable, but if it's energized, that means the wires are more or less separated. So they're not really just touching with each other, shorting out completely. Because you can still hear a little bit of a buzzing noise from the motor. It's spinning by itself. It shouldn't be doing this. So you can hear a little bit of a buzzing <clears throat> because when the coil when the coil is energized there is no way for me to move the throttle plate it's not going to happen it's just not going to let me because the motor is going to keep it in position if the clutch coil is dead this is what it's doing so let me show you why I think the coil is bad shut down the power I need to separate the connector. It's going to be a little tough with one hand, but you try. I just want to make this live. Okay, so the connector is separated. First, we want to check resistance on the coil, of course, see if there are any shorts and cables past the coil. So, <clears throat> here is our multimeter. This is uh, basically how to see if the coil is okay. So, I'll try to get my best in terms of 
work it with one hand. So points are, the leads are touching our coil terminals here. And we see zero, I mean not zero, I'm sorry. <laughs> we see zero resistance. It's infinite. That means the coil is open circuit. And it's a common thing on these throttle bodies. To compare, I have another coil here. There's another one. That one is dead. Actually, let's do it this way. Here is another coil, two coils. Here's one coil and the other coil, right? So we'll try to measure resistance on this coil. And there's nothing, no resistance, open circuit. We'll try to measure resistance on this coil. It's very difficult with one hand, but there. Here's our four or five ohms. This is where you want it to be. So this one is more or less live coil. I don't know what it's doing on the bench, but I'm not going to risk it. And this coil that's supposed to show same resistance, it must also show four to five ohms. It's like uh, here. Sometimes wires short and the coil becomes short circuit, but in this case it's open circuit, so coil is bad. So definitely know the coil is bad. Therefore all these problems with the screeching, which is rare, usually throttle body activates. It sees that the coil is open circuit and it basically shuts off. In our particular case, I guess it's all, uh, it's all the matter of which control module, which e uh, which TLLR module rather, is used to test. So this is a TLLR module right here. It all depends on the modules, I, I, I believe, because uh, some modules will shut down the throttle. For some reason, this module with its own hardware and software version is different and therefore it keeps unit energized but it makes that screeching noise which is by no means healthy and proper it shouldn't be doing this the plate when throttle is energized could not be pushed down because the motor and gears they will keep the plate through the coil connected with all the gearing and the coil will connect to the clutch so all of this becomes one solid piece with the shaft that uh, the actual plate sits on and it becomes pretty much rock steady and motor is turning and adjusting the actual plate so therefore you can press it down you can open it yes but you cannot press it down because opening is mechanical therefore the car will drive but your idle speed is going to be wrong and also you see in this case not only that the idle speed was okay more or less and most likely the idle speed was okay because of so much carbon buildup. It basically closed the passage there. So there was less gap left. As you can see, I cannot even see a gap. It's like blocked off. Well, not blocked off completely, but there is a little bit of gap left. So for that reason, idle speed was lower because naturally less air would go through those little openings and therefore the idle would be lower. If it would have been cleaned off, idle speed would have been somewhere around a thousand. Because when this throttle activates, it constantly keeps the plate at certain angle just to keep idle speed proper. Let's activate it once more and then see it tries to. Because of the carbon, it kind of like stays in the position where it needs to be. I can make it maybe stop and try to so you get the idea if the screeching is coming from your throttle body this what you might experience, not only the wires, but the clutch coil.
pretty loud I gotta say okay so let's just wrap this up and um, I'll get in touch with customer and see what we're gonna do and this is going to be all this is Victor at RestoreYourMercedes.com thank you for watching